Kann man schauen. Well, so this is the contents of my uh, presentation, so short history of animation and the two techniques I'm going to talk about are clay animation and rose sculpting. So early animation, um, so you have this Egyptian um, cave painting and wrestling. So the drawing is very sequentially, so you've got just different moves as the arms move across. So like, even if you were to cut that together as um, a gift or something, I'm pretty sure you'd actually get real nice movement throughout it. Um, so that would have been really early animation, that's like 4,000 years ago. And then more recent would have been the Fina Kistoscope that was um, made in 1841 by Joseph Plateau. And it was a disc with a sequential drawing on, so when you spun it and you looked through a slit, it looked like it was moving. So you had like people dancing or like a dragon eating someone. Um, so that was pretty cool, but it's not really what we would have known as animation more. <coughs> so when you move up to like the late 1800s and the early 1900s, you have um, you would draw your animation and you would photograph every single frame. So like this took ages to do, and it was real jittery because it, like you'd never get it as accurate as you wanted it to because things just moved around the page. Um, a change in celluloid film because in celluloid film you could like have um, a background or a plate. And then you could like have your characters on cellular film and you could actually just move them around, take a photo, move them around, take a photo, and it's just a little bit better. It still took a lot of time, but it didn't take as long, and there wouldn't have been as much discrepancy between each drawing. And then in 1928, Walt Disney um, came out, well, Disney came out with Steamboat Willie, which was one of the first animations to have sound in it, which is quite a big deal. And then um, 10 years or nine years later, they had Snow White, which was the first feature, uh, feature animated film. That also had sound in it. And then just moving forward again, there was with the use of computers, animation became up. Um, you could do much more powerful things with it. It was using feature films, like Star Wars and stuff, using animation. And then up in like 95 or 95, Toy Story came out, and it was the first feature film to be used to use computer generated in images for animation. And then the next thing we'll have is animation. So Clay animation is done by you would make a figure out of clay or plasticine, and then you would start, uh, make it around a metal wire called an armature, which is a uh, word still used in um, computer right now, like Blender, we call them armatures or skeletons. Uh, so, yeah, so the model is based on, the model is made around the wire, uh, and then you just take photos of each slight movement, and you would organize them again, which is another thing that just took a really long time to do. But Yeah, so it gives the illusion of movement. Um, it would take ages, especially if you had loads of characters within one set. It would take a very long time to just have slight adjustments. Um, oh yeah, one of the early play animation things was um, Sculptor's Nightmare, which was where a sculptor is given the job of making um, busts of the next American president, and he falls asleep on the nightmare, and they all come to life, so I'm just gonna show the show you that. From the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Yeah, so as you can see there, it's moving, but the camera itself is also moving, so it's quite jittery, it's not that easy to follow, but you see it coming together there as it's a progress. It actually looked pretty good, I think, for the time, but the film is just terrible condition. So my chosen practitioner for it was uh, Ray Harryhausen, who worked on Jason of the Argonauts. Um, he was inspired himself early on by King Kong, which is by Willis O'Brien which would have featured lots of um, characters, but, like King Kong himself would have been a character in it. But um, Ray Harrison, Ray Harry has came up with a technique that would allow him to have his uh, animation interact with um, live action characters, so it was called Dynamation, and he would have it so that the characters would appear maybe in the foreground, and the um, live action would project in the background, and he would have his characters act out, as you see in Jason and the Argonauts with the skeletons. You can see there's live action in the background and the skeletons in the foreground. Yeah, and then he would have gone on to influence the likes of um, Peter Jackson, say, so he, he would have made Lord of the Rings, but when he made Lord of the Rings, he would have made these, I don't know what you read, he called them bigotures, I guess, because he made giant 
scale models, so they were joined of what model they were, but they weren't actually like huge. So like you know, make hands deeper Gondor and it'd be this huge scale and he would have the camera film at the front, much like he would have done with Dino Motion, but it would have been done with a green screen in the background. Um, so rotoscoping was made by well, the technique was invented by Max Fleischer and his brother David Fleischer. So they would have um they would have gone out and film and they would project it onto the screen and then it would be drawn over. Um, what that did was it allowed for the animation to be a lot more fluid and like human uh, movement could like say your arm moves like that, they could draw each frame of it much better, which couldn't have been done by say an animator as smoothly. And like with uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, they actually cast a choreographer or a dancer to do her movements so that you get the sort of these really nice graceful movements that wouldn't that maybe an animator wouldn't have known how to draw possibly. Uh, just it just looks much better. And one of the Fleischer brothers, one of the first things they made was uh, Coco the Clown. And as you see the Compared to the other movements, it's, it's pretty fluid. Yeah, so just the movements of the clown itself are quite human like. Maybe like watching a film where you and then my practitioner for that is Ralph Bakshi who worked on Lord the early Lord of the Rings made in the I think it was 78. And I'll show you the clip from that as well. Uh, the way. Uh, what it was gonna be it's um because he worked with cell animation and uh Rose Goldman for that, so you have these cell animated backgrounds, but in the foreground you have, say, like it's it really looks like people, but they're all drawn on, and then you also have like um, more like so the bad guys in it are more um, they're more human like near the end, and then the good guys in it are more sort of animated, but they're both done with rotoscoping. And uh, Perry Hexton would have also influenced Peter Jackson. It was the first time that he'd uh, been exposed to Lord of the Rings, but he also oh, not Perry Hexton, um, Bakshi influenced him. And then he also influenced um, Gore Verbinski, who um, directed Rango. So just um, the way Ralph Bakshi would have worked was an animation for him wasn't just for children. He tried to make it more adult uh, content, not like um, all right, but just a little bit more adult, adult orientated, which is what um, Gore Verbinski goes for as well. Um, that's not really 